Morning, folks. I'm Dave Canterbury with Self-Reliance Outfitters and the Pathfinder School. Back down here at the Pathfinder Outdoor Classroom. Back in another segment in our series, 10 Minutes to Better Land Navigation. What I want to cover today is something that's not covered very often when it comes to navigation, and that is latitude and longitude. And the reason that can be important for navigation is from a search and rescue standpoint, most of your ground rescue is based on UTM grid. We've talked about UTM grid, plotting grid coordinates, things like that in past videos in this series. But if you are being rescued by air, or if you are on water, you're going to have to have lat long to be able to give them a good location for rescue. So if you are using some kind of a ground signal panel in the middle of a forested area, and the chances are they're gonna send a helicopter looking for you, they're gonna need a basic lat long to be able to find you. A UTM grid's not going to do them as much good. Now it's very easy to estimate your lat long by using a map and if you're carrying some device like a GPS or an inReach or even a radio like the ICOM ID52, it has a built-in GPS that will give you the lat long coordinates to your location where you're standing. And it's easy enough to communicate those over the air. However, if you have a map that you're trying to discern your lat long from, most of these maps will have lat longs on the map as well as the UTM grids. You just have to understand how to read them and how to fix them on the map so that you can communicate them well. And if you can get fairly close, you can get within a few hundred meters. And a few hundred meters on the ground versus a few hundred meters of that space in the air, you're condensing that down pretty well. You don't have to get exact like you would on something like the water to get a lat long that someone can be able to find you from. So let's talk real quick about how lat long works. So your latitude lines are the lines that run from the equator north and south to the north and south pole. Those are latitude lines. And then you have longitude lines, which run up and down around the globe. And they run from the North Pole to the South Pole, and then 180 degrees each direction around. So basically you have a 360 degree circle both ways that puts boxes on the earth that give you lat long. And all of these lines are divided into degrees, but then they're divided into minutes and seconds. So you have one degree between each one of these meridian lines. Then you have 60 minutes between each degree and 60 seconds between each minute. And your map will tell you that information on the bottom border of the map on the exterior sides where your grid coordinates come from to begin with. And depending on the scale of your map, it can be very easy to get your lat long within about five seconds. So if we have that one to 10,000 map, then we have blown this area up quite a bit and we're gonna have about 15 seconds between each one of these readings on the bottom and the sides of the map. We're gonna talk about in just a minute on the map and look at that and show you how to estimate that. However, understanding the way this stuff reads is important as well and understanding where it comes from. So your longitude line starts in Greenwich, England. And basically they also relate to time because each one of these lines that goes across here is where the sun is going to be in the south at high noon along the, anything that's on this line. So if any country or any city or any state is on this same line of longitude, their noon is gonna be the same time. And that's how time zones kind of work. And that's why it's a different time at noon at California than it is in say Ohio, because the sun is not on the same longitudinal line. And then your latitude lines run 90 degrees each direction from the equator up to the North and South Pole. So you've got two easy, readings there that you can put together to give you a lat long, and then you divide that down into minutes and seconds to get an exact location. So let's look at what the latitude longitude is on a GPS for this location. So if we look at the latitude longitude location for the Pathfinder School here at the base camp, the latitude is 39 degrees. That means we're 39 degrees north on this line going toward the North Pole from the equator. Two minutes and 33 seconds from that line to the next, okay? Our longitude here is 82 degrees. And remember that 82 degrees is from that central meridian, which is Greenwich, England. 82 degrees, 30 minutes, 49 seconds, okay? That's the way that's written and this is west, okay? So you have two letter designations on there that tell you whether you're north or south of the equator whether you're east or west of the prime meridian line, all right? 
So it's written exactly like this when you write it out. Now, it seems complicated, but so the grid coordinates in the beginning. We're going to talk about how to look at our map and figure this out to make it more discernible. Okay, so looking at the bottom of this map, you can see here it says 82 degrees, 31 minutes, 0 seconds. 82 degrees, 30 minutes, 45 seconds. Those are your longitude lines. Your latitude lines are over here. This one says 39 degrees, 2 minutes, 15 seconds. 39 degrees, 2 minutes, 30 seconds. So that tells you that this is divided into 15 second increments across this map. Now, to show you how accurate this can be as far as an air rescue goes, if we just take two of these lines, and these lines that are right above these degree readings here, and you can barely see it on the map, there's a little tick mark there. Those are called graticulates, okay? And there's one at each one of these points, there's a graticulate. And if you cross those lines here and here, that are closest to the location you're trying to find, let's just say it's base camp, okay? So these are the two closest graticulates to base camp, and we cross those up. That line right there is exactly 39,230 and 82,3045, and that would be given in lat long. So we go 32 degrees, 230 north, 82 degrees, 30, 82 degrees, 3045 west, and that's going to pinpoint that location right there. Now, if we look at that with our scale, and we know that one centimeter is 100 meters, just that information there off the map gets you within about 120 meters, 125 meters, somewhere in that neighborhood of your location. And that's pretty close if someone's looking for you from the air because they're going to do a grid search pattern, which is going to be multiple grids that they're going to search. So 125 meters off the point that you give them is fairly close. Now, you can estimate that even further down if you want to by dividing these up. So if you are about one and a little more over from this, then you're going to you're going from 45 here to 31 here. So you got 15 seconds between here, and you are about one-third of the way over. And you can almost visualize that with your eye, right? You can almost visualize what one-third is because there's one line and there's the other line. So if you divide that by three, you're going to be right there. So you're about one-third of the way over or five seconds over. So I would take that line there and I would go, if my reading that I took on the map was 45 and the next number is 31, then I'm going to get over five more seconds and I'm going to say, 30 minutes and 50 seconds is where I'm at here. The same thing at the top. If I divide that by three, so I can go five seconds, right? I can look at this and this and divide that pretty easily by three in my head and know that I'm about one of those up. So I'm about five degrees or five seconds, excuse me, up as well. And so now if I'm at 39, 230 here and I go to 45 and I add five to that, I'm at 35. So if I call this 32, 235, then I've pinpointed this a lot closer than where I was here. But in all honesty, it's not a necessity. All right, guys, so that was just a quick look at latitude, longitude on the map and how to kind of figure that lat long and get yourself close if you're trying to give a coordinate off a map for latitude and longitude. Remember that you have to have the letters on there of north and west or south and east on your latitude and longitude, but it's easy enough to divide that into sections of three on a one to 10,000 scale map to make everything within five seconds. That's very easy to do. If you've got a different scale map, the measurement's gonna be different. Again, going back to why I like that one to 10,000 scale map, it makes everything fairly easy when you're trying to take readings off the map, even by eye. All right, guys, listen, I appreciate your views. I appreciate your support. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, for our business, all of our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends. And I'll be back to another video in the series as soon as I can, guys. Thanks.